Mm, bop, 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 the tabletop super show. Mm, bop, 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 the tabletop super show. Welcome to the tabletop super show. I'm Stevie Ray. Today, we're going to begin what's going to be a two or three part series on early fantasy miniatures. We're going to be taking a look at some prototype Games Workshop Citadel models that were produced for TSR back in the mid 80s. I also want to take a moment to talk about casting and mold making. I mean, why did they make models in pewter? Well, back in the day, most models that were produced for uh, consumers were made out of lead. So, when a, a mold maker or someone commissioned a product or miniature to be made for a company, they would generally cast the very first casts from those molds out of pewter and add a little bit of shade to show detail and then mail those out so that whoever uh, they were sending it to could tick the boxes on whether they wanted them to produce that miniature or send back notes about it. Um, another reason that masters were produced in pewter is because it, the, over time molds get damaged. So as you got like, a silicone mold and over time you continue to cast it and cast it, eventually those molds are going to wear down. Now, having some masters that were made out of pewter and had captured all of the detail right at the beginning of the mold making process allows you to actually re-imprint those same master casts and recreate the mold. In this way you could continue to produce a miniature over time uh, wh whether the mold was a failure or not. So I want to take a minute to uh, look at these models and we'll talk a little bit about the sculptors and the line itself and I also want to tell you guys a little bit while we look at them about the history uh, and whims of the industry regarding uh, TSR and Citadel at the time and also Ralpartha. So real quick before we get into actually checking out the miniatures and uh, talking a little bit about the sculptors I actually wanted to read you guys the uh, awesome letter that Jim sent with this miniatures lot. It's pretty funny. To whom it may concern, Citadel Miniatures. My bosses at TSR had a terrible problem after Gary Gygax left. They had no one who understood gaming. I became a, the approval mechanism for many of the licenses TSR had from computer games to miniatures. I was given many batches of excellently crafted Citadel miniatures to approve or disapprove. I had to check to make sure the proper armor and weapons were worn by the creatures and player characters of the AD&D game. It wasn't a problem for me, but my corporate bosses didn't stand a chance of understanding the looks of the figures. Approving miniatures was one of the jobs I truly enjoyed because I ended up with a lot of figures. In those early days, I loved painting. Figures. I was never any good. Now, I'm going to stop right here to say I have a few examples of Jim's work in enamels and early Ralpartha paints, and he, he's not half bad. Uh, I was never any good, but I liked doing it just the same. Thank you very much for buying this for my private collection. Best regards, James M. Ward. So now, with that, Let's get into taking a look at the models. So we're going to begin by taking a look at a few sculpts that were made by Allie Morrison. Starting with Blink Dog ADD 80 Sculpt B. Now you can see here where this miniature has cast, been cast in pewter and it has had some shade put onto the model to show detail so that you know when, the, when, it, when these were sent to Jim they could be either approved or disproved. I have a few other models from this range by Ali as well. These Norkers, which are all variants of the Norker with raised fist. Once again, just beautiful sculpts from Ali Morrison. He's a brilliant sculptor, painter, and artist, most known for his uh, absolutely iconic Orcs and Goblins army for uh, fantasy battle. He's also the co-founder of Marauder Miniatures with Trish Morrison. If you guys are interested in uh, seeing what Ali's up to these days, he has his blog, Ali's Toy Soldiers, and I will go ahead and leave a link in the description to that. These Norkers are just beautiful, gorgeous work. Next, we have a few sculpts by Bob Naismith. These are a few of his ghouls that were produced for the AD&D range. Once again, shaded for detail, beautiful cast masters. Now Bob is a uh, sculptor and creator of the first Space Marine. 
Bob freelanced in the 80s working for companies like GW as well as Grenadier and others. He's still producing models actually to this day. Mostly in digitally sculpted format at this point. Um, if you want to check out his uh, newer work as STL files at his website, uh, go ahead and look for that in the description below as well. One more piece Bob did that I'm happy to have in this is an actual unreleased ADD 14 variant of the female thief high level. This one has a different hair sculpt. The one that was produced actually has uh, it's the hair pulled back in a bun. So this one was actually disproved and changed before it went into production. Anyways, beautiful work. And finally, we have this beautiful piece sculpted by Jeff Goodwin. This is Bugbear Tribal Group ADD 63. This is the youth. You can see the awesome amount of sculpting work that went into the, to creating this sling. The sling stones, bag of slings, and just the, you know, just all around awesome work on this cast. Jess uh, was the creator of the iconic 40k Eldar and Dark Eldar armies, and his iconic Skaven for Fantasy Battle. His black and white artwork for GW was uh, just amazing, and it stands up there with the likes of John Blanche, in my opinion. He's also authored the 40k 3rd uh, edition Codex for the Eldar as well. Really happy to have this piece in my collection. It's just a gorgeous model. Now that we've had a chance to take a look at those gorgeous pewter masters and talk a little bit about the sculptors, we're going to talk about TSR. But first, I want to give a shout out to the founder of Otherworld Miniatures and friend of the channel, Richard Scott, for his kind use of the permission to use some of the finely painted examples of the AD&D Citadel range. So go ahead, folks, kick up your feet while I quickly recount the erratic history of TSR Miniatures licensing. The original Dungeons & Dragons launched in early 1974 and began to almost immediately steamroll its way into consumers' homes and onto their tabletops. With the use of historical 15 and 25 millimeter models for its precursor, Chainmail, it was only natural that the use of miniatures would follow suit into the fantasy realm of D&D. In late 75 and through 1976, miniatures companies the likes of Ralph Partha, Archive, and Brian Ansell's Asgard Miniatures were already producing generic models for D&D use, but were unlicensed to make any based on exclusive TSR products. All this changed in 1977, when TSR first licensed a miniature company to do exactly this, a small UK company, Minifigs, was contracted to produce 25mm figures for D&D. The iconic Minifigs red back blisters are to this day still highly sought after by collectors and command hefty sums. Minifigs would continue in this fashion for a few years until the release of Advanced D&D. At this time, TSR licensed Grenadier models, which produced a mountain of box sets small and large, as well as 16 blister packs. There was trouble in paradise, though, as when TSR caught wind that Grenadier was planning to start making minis for other companies, that license was terminated soon after in the winter of 1982. The years of 1983 and 84 that followed were considered a rough patch for TSR's mini line, as they produced models in-house that were not as well received as the Grenadier and Minifigs lines, causing a loss in sales for the branch. In 1985, TSR looked back across the pond of the UK and licensed Citadel Miniatures to produce a line of AD&D models to reinvigorate sales. The models were of high quality, but differed from the style of based miniatures in the rest of the line, as they were among the first slot of models produced and required plastic bases to stand. Today, Games Workshop, now Warhammer, is the world leader in tabletop wargaming to the point that the word Warhammer itself is synonymous with miniatures in tabletop wargaming to the layperson. They produced a whopping 86 blisters for TSR before TSR pulled the license in favor of the high-quality models Ralph Partha was producing, as well as the offer of greater royalties for the license. Citadel, unfortunately, was left holding quite a bit of stock, which they offloaded at a discount to recoup costs. Ralph Partha would remain the primary licensee of TSR miniatures until Wizards of the Coast purchased TSR in 1997. Today, some of these companies live on, and some of these sculpts are still produced in white metal in some capacity. So that's going to wrap things up for this episode. 
If you enjoyed this, then invite the like button to your local dive bar to drink until 2 a.m., but then right before the bar closes, sneak out the back door and leave them with the tab. As always, if you guys enjoyed this content, please subscribe to the channel and see more like this, or even go into the channel and see some of my other videos like this, and leave me a comment if you feel like I got anything wrong about this. I'd love to hear from you. And until then, I'm Stevie Ray, and this is the Tabletop Super Show.